This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey Troopers, this is Allison Croft, Baby McNulty and Trancers, and you're listening to Tommy Throwback Kovac on Splat from the Past. Say, who's the skirt? Nice. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend Allison Croft. She just wrote a book about auditioning when you're an actor. I don't have the title handy yet, but I'm going to ask her when uh, we connect in a moment. And I can't wait. You know, I just adore Allison. She is just so awesome. She's like the sister I always wanted growing up. I just adore her. There's a lot of fucking chaos around the house right now because moving to Modesto, May 31st, and a lot of emotions are in the air. It's the aftermath of my uncle's death, and I'm just trying to gather my thoughts of, like, this is all coming at me so fast. But then I guess that's the nature of turning 40. You know, I will figure this out. I will try to come out on top like I always do. But in the meantime, I'm just still sad because... This, this apartment build this podcast, you know, not saying that it, could, it can't continue in Modesto, but it's just something special about it. You know what I mean? So yeah, here is my new interview with Allison Croft. Hello. Hey, Allison. Welcome back. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, we got lots of chaos in the house right now because uh, we're moving to Modesto in a few weeks. Modesto, boy. Yeah. Wait, yeah. what are you doing there? Are you just moving to move or? Something like that, yeah. My brother got a job over there uh, or close by to it, and we just don't like renting. You know, we've been here six years, and the, the rent keeps getting higher, so we got to go. I see. Everywhere is getting much more expensive. Everywhere, yeah, crazy, crazy. Oh my, oh my God! So, first off, you know what's what's the name of this book you wrote? Uh, it's called Speaking After. Speaking After. Wow. Speaking After. Yeah. Oh, Speaking After. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What? So, what gave you the idea to write this book? So the idea behind the book is that, so I, I coach, right? I have classes and I teach privately. Right. And there's a, a, you know, a sort of shorthand that, you know, people have in the industry, especially on auditions, and I speak that language. So there's a lot of times where I'll be, I'll be teaching mm -hmm. and I'll say phrases or say things, of course, and... I get looks on people's faces like, what is she talking about? Like, <laughs> what does that mean? And, you know, I have to stop myself because I've been doing this for such a long time that, um, you know, it's just kind of something that has naturally come to me just from training and just, you know, working and all of this stuff. So uh, the book became a book because I was like, this is going to be something for my students. So I don't have to, you know, stop class in the middle and explain stuff. Right. It was like, it's like a reference kind of book. So if you get a note from, from me in class, um, you can just pop to that page, read it, get an idea of, of what it is, mm -hmm. uh, what it is I'm talking about. And then there's a section in the back um, as to how to execute. And, you know, and then I started thinking about it more, and I was like, this book actually would be better for, uh, good for everyone mm -hmm. that's auditioning. Um, because surprisingly, there's a lot more actors nowadays, because everyone can, you know, self-tape from anywhere. Right. So you're getting a lot more of an influx of people coming in, and... You know, on my conscience, <laughs> being a coach, <laughs> yeah. that there's a lot of co now everyone thinks they can be a coach too mm -hmm. with anything. You know, everybody thinks they're an expert on something. Of course. So, um, you know, a lot of people are getting really bad information. Yes. So, you know, I just kind of I just kind of came to the the idea that you know maybe a book would be something that would be helpful to a lot of people. So. That's kind of how it originated, and then I just sat down and started writing it, and 
Um, again, it's like a, it's a reference, it's like 136 pages or so, and you're really at a deficit if you don't speak the language. If you can't interpret a note yeah. on an audition or a callback and deliver, you're most likely not going to book the job. Right. So, that's pretty much how it, how it all came about and why I um, decided to write it. Yeah, that, that, that's great that uh, you want to uh, correct all that bad information out there. Yeah, because uh, one thing I've learned, some uh, so many actors uh, out in L.A. that teach classes, they're, they're pretty much running like a Scientology cult, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there are classes of the Scientology. And hey, listen, there's a lot of really great coaches out there, too. And right. And there's a lot of people that You say fucked. I, I can imagine little Allison Cross playing poker at that age. <laughs> what, when I was little? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I started playing poker actually later on. Um, oh, okay. I started playing for a, actually for a living for a little bit, like to help supplement my income. Wow. That's a story for another day, but yeah. So I speak poker fluently too. Yeah, I've I've only come to to realize this in in recent in recent years. I guess it depends on on how high or low your status is in the industry. But at at the end of the day, the producer and the director they're they're looking for someone that they that they can get along with. You know, when they're working with them. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, get along with yeah, absolutely. But I think what trumps that is what I'm talking about here with the book is being able to understand creatively and collaboratively work. Mm-hmm. You can't, if you come in with a, with an attitude of, oh, even, even if you're the nicest, most easiest person to get along with and you get a note and you can't adjust mm-hmm. to redirect, yeah. you're not going to book the job. It doesn't matter. Right. So, you know, and it doesn't, it's not like you're going to, you're going to learn this stuff overnight, but getting an understanding of how important that is, it's going to go a long way. So, so it's basically so so it's basically about t- teaching team effort, teamwork. Oh yeah, yeah. Being, it's being coachable, being open, being vulnerable to change. You know, mm-hmm. being able to um, shift and, and pivot and change gears. Also, keeping you know the stuff that you bring to the role 
but also being able to change direction on something. Mm -hmm. There's also another element, which I kind of is the, is the bottom line of the book, is that a lot of times you're going to get direction that is result-oriented. Right. Um, and if you don't know how to interpret that and internalize it and justify it in five seconds flat, you're just going to be playing the result, and therefore it's not, you're not you're, the result is going to be you acting angry instead of justifying why your character's angry, because you're going to get direction like, oh yeah, she's really pissed at this part, you really, you know, give it to them. And, you know, most people will go, oh, so scream louder there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's not, you know, it, you could do that. It, but it's going to be result-oriented, and it's not going to be coming from any place that's organic. It's not going to make sense to you fully in the scene because you're just playing a result. So the book kind of goes through how to kind of interpret stuff. Right. So it's true to the character, and the work is so good. Right. It's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, uh, working in an improv group only without the improv. <laughs> Yeah, you have to, yes. I mean, uh, improv actors are, they're masters, you know? Yeah. And, um, but again, I have improv people in my class that, you know, a lot of our work is getting them to understand um, that you're not married to your original idea. Mm hmm You know? Right. I've had actors get combated with me. Like, to speak to you know, like, because they're defending that I didn't necessarily see something they were doing. And it's like, no, I saw what you're doing. I'm giving you a redirect. And you can't sit there and argue with somebody. Right. Unless you're, you know, Al Pacino or some shit, you know. Yes. <laughs> and you, can, you know, you're an established guy. And at that point, you are or a woman. And at that point, you already know the language. And have mastered the craft so you know that's not to say every actor is a dream boat yeah know, this, but no but at the end of the day uh you want to you don't know at the end of the day you still want to have a good working environment you hear about people that are difficult mm -hmm. um yes they may you know, work, but they're not getting asked back by the same people. Yes. Again and again and again. Oh, yeah. And to have a consistent career, you have to be able to consistently be able to deliver in a collaborative way. And yeah. That's if you have one line, five lines, ten lines, you're the star, whatever. You know, so. Right. I'm helping, I'm helping the world, Tommy. I know. I just, I'm so proud of you, you know. It, was was this like a pandemic project? No, it actually just started a few months ago because, like I said, in class, mm -hmm. I just noticed that people would, so sometimes in class, I don't know if you've taken any acting classes, but. Not for a while. <laughs> okay, so if I ask an actor, okay, uh, you know, camera's on, we're mm -hmm. recording, walk across the stage or walk across just like camera frame. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, people are like, oh, shoot, how did I walk? My arms feel uncomfortable. Is this how my arms go when I'm walking? You know, we get so self-conscious, and, and, and newer actors, older actors too, mm -hmm. as soon as that camera's on, most people start getting very insecure. So when I throw things out, like, it's a very common note, like, uh, the scene needs more urgency. Mm-hmm. Um, immediately an actor's like, what does that mean exactly? Like, in what form does urgency mean? And it's like, common sense is what, what does urgency mean, right? Mm -hmm. But for some reason, when people start acting, they get very, they want to know, they want to analyze stuff to the point of exhaustion. Mm -hmm. It's like they forget how to walk. They just forget. It's like all of a sudden it becomes a thing that they have to tackle. So that's why the book, I began writing it, is to kind of get all these terms out so people can flip to it. If they're in class, if a director gives a note, 
Mm-hmm. Well, now, a lot of times with self-tape, you'll get a note from casting if you're coming back, right? So they're having a producer session, and sometimes you'll get um, notes before you show up. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll get the note right when you show up at your Zoom session. But if you get a note beforehand, it's like, what does the word it mean in this sentence? Like, oh, it just means it. You got to, re- you know, just like com- the people get very insecure about getting their notes. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a book you can just flip to. You'd be like, oh, it means this. Okay. And then the back of the book is, um, the second part of the book is the importance of the terms and why you need to, why you need to know the word. Mm-hmm. For the phrase, and how to imp- how to get better at doing it, how to execute it. Right. So, kind of a useful guide. It is certainly not a memoir of any kind. I mean, that's for another time and another day. But this one's a, a useful, practical guide. Yeah, I got to get back to writing my memoir. I've been taking a, a long break. Once I get to Modesto, I'll have a, a little bit more peace and quiet to do it. I've just been preoccupied with the podcast. But, uh, God, that is so awesome. So is this book self-published? Mm-hmm. Nice. It is. It is. It's up on Amazon. Again, called Speaking Actor. And it's like 10 bucks. I think the Kendall version's like, I don't know, a couple of dollars or something. Wow. Um, yeah, so well, that's kind of it. I mean, I'm pretty proud of it. It's, it's good, it's accurate, you know, good information. Yeah, are, are you going to do, are you, are you going to do like a little book bookstore tour? I might. I'm not quite sure exactly what the deal is. I know I'm going to a couple conventions and Woo! Love um, it. asked to be on a couple panels and things like that. So Woo! I'm going to take it with me. Love it. You know, people are probably going to be, like, mad at me because they're like, oh, she's giving away secrets. Oh. Well, I'm not an actor or a coach that's, like, trying to hide, you know. Yeah. Like, if I'm trying to help you, I'm legitimately trying to help you. I'm not just trying to make a buck. And there's a lot of people out there just trying to make a buck. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Exploiters, gaslighters. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It is. It is crazy. I mean, I remember I went to one class a long time ago before I uh, before I found my theater company mm-hmm. I was probably still a teen right. at the time and the guy the place was packed and the guy took role for the class with check yeah <laughs> it didn't matter if he was there it didn't matter if he had relationships with them it was legitimately looking at the paid mm-hmm. check and reading the name and I was like I don't think this is the class for me that, that is creepy, really creepy. Well, it just kind of said what was important. You know, yes, of course you want to get paid. I hate having to chase money. It's yeah. not nice when you're, you know, because I get it. I'm an actor, too, and I've, you know, been young and, you know, broke or whatever. And, you know, class, and my classes are not that expensive, so it's not like I'm charging an arm and a leg. I keep it affordable so people you know, can afford it, because I get it. Right. Um, but, yeah, chasing money sucks. But again, I'm not going to take role by, the, by who paid and not let anyone else participate. I don't know, it's just a weird feeling. So, it is. we're going to take advantage of people with, <laughs> you know, a dream or a talent or whatever. That's not me, you know? Absolutely not. Oh my God! Do you do you know how often I talk to an actress and she gets defensive uh, when I ask her how she got cast in something, as as if I'm trying to insinuate that she gave head to the producer or director. <laughs> oh my God! A lo- um, it happens a lot. Yeah, I mean, I don't. That is, I I've been in a Me Too situation, but mm-hmm. nothing like that. And these days, like. Good luck. I, I mean, yeah. wherever there's about an imbalance of power, you're always going to find that. Something, mm-hmm. you know, where someone feels pressured. But the industry now is so, you know, sensitive about it. 
Um, yeah. As they should be. I mean, you know, taking advantage of, of people, of, of power, you know, your power in any situation is crap, of course. But it's going to happen. Right. I mean, I had I had Ginger Lynn, the porn star, on here last year, and she told me point blank that she got cast in Young Guns 2 because she gave head to the producer. And I don't judge that at all, okay? I'm in no position to judge. But I'm looking for, like, you know, a unique story. Like, you know, I went to Schwab's drugstore, and the soda jerker was the son of a producer, and the producer happened to be there. You know, I've heard that story a million times, so that's what I'm looking for, you know? And they just get defensive, and I, I take offense to that because that's not where I'm going. Oh. Oh, I don't think, well... I mean, I, I wouldn't even think that that would be some... I mean, unless that's what you were insinuating, but yeah. I wouldn't... I don't know. I wouldn't assume that that's your line of of questioning. No, no. But I don't know how many people that are going to admit to anything like that. Right. But she... I love... I'd do something like that and it would fail miserably. <laughs> and I would never be <laughs> asked in anything again. You know what I mean? Like... I don't, I would never, I've never been in that position, so, you know, nor would I need a job that much to where, you know. Yeah, I, I don't I don't judge anybody, you know. I I I I I have a crazy past and I'm not going to judge anybody that does anything like that. Um yeah. I saw on IMDb, and we know how inaccurate IMDb is. You 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 were uh, narrating a horror movie recently called The Desert Dwellers. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, so, like, you know, how, how did that gig come about? I don't know. I don't know. I did that recording. <clears throat> um, oh, been over a year now I did that recording. Like a friend, uh, not a friend, but somebody reached out and mm-hmm. went through <clears throat> their representatives and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but voiceover stuff, I did a two years, two seasons on a... Spanish show. Be good if I could remember the name of it, right, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> um, Merle. God. Uh, Mer- I don't know. It was like a big Spanish show, and so then I did one of the voices for the one of the leads in that show, and that was that was just a direct booking. Mm-hmm. So I just got a call and an offer to do to do that, and that was hard work. Hats off to voiceover actresses and actors because they uh, literally give you no time to prep. Like, I didn't right. script. I showed up and they were like, we'll show you the scene. Oh, okay. Show me the scene. All right, you ready to go? And then all the, the words, you know, all your lines are on like a ticker, like at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Eating. And my character, of course, is a fast-talking professor of philosophy. So it was like all these like <laughs> Latin philosophers or whatever. And it was like I could barely even read the, the ticker, and uh, that's when I was like, "All right, your your experience and training is paying off for this job because I miraculously nailed each each one. The first or second take is the one that they printed, and they don't stop and go back and do pickups. At least they didn't for me. Mm-hmm. Scenes were epic, long. Nice. So it was. It was, uh, that was tough. I mean, I was like, wow, these people are getting their money's worth for sure. This is not easy. I could not imagine someone, you know, who was new or, or something like, or not even, who's not done voice, this type of voiceover work before to be able to go in and really, you know, nail it. Like, it was tough. Yeah. So, uh, the show was called um, Merley. That show you were talking about, that Spanish show, Merle, it was called? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was just looking it up here. But, yeah, I mean, voiceover, you know, I mean, at least now, you know, you don't have to be in the studio with people, although a lot of people I talk to prefer it that way, you know, but you can be on a yacht in the Caribbean and record your, um, you know, your voiceover work. Yeah, I guess you can. I went into studio for it, which was great. Um, I'd much prefer that because I don't want to be involved with any tech at all. If I don't have to, mm-hmm. I'm good. 
you know, I would yeah. much rather, because I don't, I, I didn't train to be a technician uh, in a studio. Mm-hmm. I don't, no, I'm an actor and, you know, I I'm barely can make my Wi-Fi work, so I'm good with that. And then cell tapes, the whole new thing, you know, where you got to be somewhat understanding of, of tech, but it's a new element to auditioning mm-hmm. that, um, you know, I prefer in the room, obviously, but it's all mainly self tapes these days. Yeah, everyone's doing the self tape thing, and uh, um, everyone you know's got their demo reels on YouTube and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually doing a um, putting together a reel of like all of my work, mm-hmm. which is proving to be kind of long. <laughs> <laughs> So it'll be like a real, like, you know, from when I'm six to now, and um, that should be pretty interesting. I'll send you a copy of that when I get it um, finished, but there's things I don't even remember I was involved in, and I'm like, oh, that's right, I did that. Oh, oh yeah, there was that thing, too. So uh, it's going to be a lot of, a lot of footage, a lot of footage there. Oh, that's so cool, though. Yeah. Monday uh, is going to be six years since I started the podcast, and it's total mind-blowing. And I'm just so freaking grateful. You know, moving here it, from here is just bittersweet, even though I've just been bored out of my mind since I, since I came up here. You know, the, the fact that, you know, it started here is just, it's just you know, it's, it's, it's really sad. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is, my mom and I, we switched bedrooms um, after after about two months when I, when we first came up here. And, um, you know, good majority of my of my interviews have been recorded in, th- in this current bedroom. But like the first 20 or so was in the old uh, bedroom that she took over. And then eventually my brother took that room when he moved up here. And she's been living in the, the living room ever since. Um yeah, it's it's crazy. I have a guest coming on uh, Monday to talk about tantra sex. <laughs> oh, only you, Tommy. Only you. Only me. That's amazing. <clears throat> that is amazing. Yeah. Uh, tantra sex. That's I have my utmost respect for like people like Sting and stuff who yeah have have been out about that kind of thing about that practice. Mm-hmm. Um. I can meditate. That's about as far as I can go. I, I've seen some documentaries on um, on Netflix about it. There was that uh, that one that came out not too long ago about that girl. She had a cult in San Francisco. It was a it was an orgasmic meditation cult, and there was a lot of uh, sexual assault and all this money laundering and what have you going on. I was like, God, that that's so creepy. I you know because you know I was I was still living in the Bay Area for years when that happened. I can't believe I had never heard of it until this documentary. You know. It is, it is. Oh, I got to tell you something funny. Recently, I uh, got my first prostate exam, and it was a letdown, big time. So I went to the doctor, had my, my, AC, my A1C levels checked, you know, for my diabetes, and, it's, and it looks great, by the way. Um, I've lost 40, 45 pounds since uh, I started my diet last year, and I got, yeah, I got a lot more to go. And um, she's like, okay, I'm going to give you, you know, your, uh, your, your packet here to go get uh, the rest of your labs done and stuff. And since you're going to be turning 40 soon, it's time for your first prostate exam. And I'm like, yes, I can't wait. Right. So we go. So I go to, um, so I go to the clinic and uh, the nurse is super cute and she had nice hands and I'm like, oh, I'm going to enjoy this. Right. So we do the, the labs. Yeah, you know, check in for my liver and whatever. Um, and she's like, okay, you're, you're done now. And I'm like, wait a minute, what about the prostate exam? And she's like, oh, the blood test is part of it. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, I think that 
the common alpha male would be ha would be happier than a pig and shit, knowing that it, it was a blood test, right? But not me. <laughs> I was so let down by that. <laughs> but well, what what was that? I said well. Yeah. Well, no, I I don't have uh, any problems with the prostate, so I'm good. That's great. Yeah. Uh, probed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then my um, my godmother is a nurse uh, who's retired now, and she's like she's like I've never heard of you know the uh, the prostate exam you're thinking of. It's always been blood test up here, and I was like, oh, that's true enough. You know, they're very prudish up here and stuff. I thought maybe <laughs> I thought maybe it was like a COVID thing or something. Prostate cancer, which is, you know, it's lucky, lucky that you didn't get, you know, you didn't get bad news. My son's father just uh, was diagnosed with uh, advanced prostate cancer, and oh. he's 45. So, uh, you know, it's a whole other element of, of co-parenting, and you know, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, of course, I wouldn't. I don't want anything, you know, terrible for my son's dad, but. It's also at 11, he, my son's 11, so trying to kind of explain what that's about right as he enters his teen years, you know, you're not supposed to be worrying about parents passing or parents' finality or life, you know, lessons like that, so um, it's tough, uh, but I'm, so, I'm glad that uh, it was all good for you, that's, that's great news. Oh, I knew, I knew it was, you know, because... The, the, I think the, you can pay people to, to probe you on the side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe go to uh, go one of those Asian massage parlors. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even know if they do that anymore, but, you know, I hear vegetables work, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can try to get creative with it. Oh my God! I love you. You're so awesome. Uh, did you did you hear my uh, interview I did with Sharon Glass? Parts of it, I think I, I listened to parts of it. Yeah, but it was a couple months ago, right? Yeah, it was back in December, at Christmas time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned near the end there. You know, I I, I love the episode that you were on. You know, and I let her know that you know you teach you teach acting and your students are working and all that stuff. You know, and she was huh. very she was very happy to hear about that. Did she remember who I was? You, at all? you know what the, I I. There's a couple people I mentioned that she did that she did. For all I for all I know, maybe for for you, maybe she did, maybe she didn't. I don't know, but she was happy to hear it because she's such a good person. Oh yeah, yeah. She's she's a powerhouse, man. Yeah, yeah. That show like. You know, it's a groundbreaking show for that time, and women that were strong like that, mm -hmm. like. You know, and, and for it to be successful at that, you know, at that time, I have a feeling it would be successful today as well, you know, updated and stuff. But, like, mm -hmm. for that time, they were uh, trailblazers, you know. Right, because, you know, they're, they're coming off of um, Charlie's Angels, which was... Also feministic, but it also it it it, it, it sexualized those um, female cops because they were sexy, you know. But these women were just full out, you know, um, you you know, um, badass, you know, female cops, you know. And you know, one's mar one's married with kids, the other one's single, but they're kicking ass and taking names. Oh, for sure. I mean, they were. I mean, there's such archetypes too, and inspiring for women uh, because I think that's when wasn't that around the time when there were because it was like all in the family not all in the family what's the one with the single mom one day at a time there was that yes and then there was also Alice she was a single mom right so for Sharon Glass's character she wasn't married and didn't have kids and I think I don't know if it's that time you know that was kind of a oh moment for television also mm -hmm. um, and to be so tough and ballsy right and and they both were not like I mean Sharon Bless is, is beautiful was beautiful um, but it was a different kind of uh, a woman you know right 
like I go on auditions and stuff, and it's like to be like leads in 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 cop shows these days. Mm -hmm. It's like very rarely are you seeing anyone over five two <laughs> that weigh more than one hundred and ten pounds, and they're like, you know, tough chicks, and it's like, give me a break, yeah. you know, like yeah. So I remember working with them, and yeah, I was I was you know a teenager at the time or whatever, but they weren't stick figures. You know, they didn't hide, you know, their toughness. And also their characters were not going to take any shit, you know. Right. It didn't matter how big they were, how scary they were, or whatever. So, it's funny to watch back, you know, older shows that kind of deal with fe with female leads. You know, and very rarely are you going to find tough bitches, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that don't look like they stepped out of a, a fashion magazine. Yeah, I'd like to see a, a cop show where the uh, where the female cop is about five two or something. That would be cool. And like you know, maybe the running joke is you know she kicks guys in the balls. <laughs> I think that is kind of the way it is now, though. Is my point? You know, mm -hmm. they don't have legitimate like you see cops. Yeah. You know, detectives. Right. They don't look like they stepped out of you know Glamour magazine. You know, some are really pretty, but they don't try to be pretty. Right. Most TV today is, you know, these actresses trying to be tough. And it's like, this is such a fucking load of shit. Sorry. It, it is. It is. <laughs> so the book uh, is available on Amazon. And I'm trying to remember, do you have a website? I do. Yeah. I do. It's um, actorscartel.com. Right. And that's kind of where I have... Um, you know, all my classes and things like that, and then you can sign up there for, for class. I just started a class uh, out of a... We lost our home in January. I was working out of a studio, a photography studio, mm -hmm. and um, so we kind of, we're moving from there, and so I found this recording studio. It's like a, a, you know, where bands go to record and stuff like that. So kind of this, like, nondescript place in the middle of the valley, you go in and it's like awesome um, musician kind of rock and roll mm -hmm. studio, and um, everything stays the art in there, but it's like a really great place to play and stuff like that. So it's great, and class is going really well, and you know, so all of that's good. Uh, Actorscartel.com, and the book is Speaking actor, um, you'll like the the cover. I think it's, it's, it's speaking actor, and then big pink luscious lips. Oh, love it! Yes, I love uh, I love uh, lip logos. I just interviewed someone uh, last week. Uh, her podcast uh, is a lip logo. And, or actually two, there's two people I talked to last week who had lip logos, you know, and it's very hard to get those logos made because they don't want to, you know, uh, get, get sued for replicating the Rolling Stones logo. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't know there were so many lip logos, uh, but it's perfect for this book, speaking actor, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, that's what we're doing, we're learning the language, you know, I like the design too, it's super simple, and, um. Super fun. Very excited about it. Oh, I, I am so. just, again, so proud of you, Allison. I'm so glad. And I, I hope you write a lot more books. Oh, thank you, Tommy. Yes. Be, I become can a, let you know, too. Here, I'm going to send you a link to it right now. Fabulous. Yeah, so you can become a celebrated author as, as well as being an actor. I'm also a playwright, too. So playwright, too. Great. I haven't, I, you know, I haven't written too many plays lately but um yeah it's something that I definitely like doing if, if I can find some good theater out in Modesto I think I might write a play and and see if oh, you that, should. yeah and see if they'll uh, if they'll put it on you know something really small and simple to start with you know oh yeah yeah you should definitely bring the freaking arts everywhere especially to Modesto my um my uh, my my, cut, my nephew mm -hmm. went to school in Modesto, mm -hmm. and he, uh, the, I guess there's a college there. It's like a Cal State, right? 
have you seen it? Supposedly it was like a state of the art thing. He was there and he had a scholarship and stuff, but unfortunately he passed away. Oh. Uh, he was going. He was attending college there, and he went and he got a motorcycle behind his parents' back. Oh. And he was going somewhere early in the morning in Modesto, and uh, he collided with another car. Oh. Awful. Uh, it was tragic. So tragic. So Modesto, when I hear Modesto, I'm like, eh, yeah, you know, just because of that, um, that relationship there. But, so be careful out there on the road. Oh, I will, you know, I mean, you know, I don't drive, I'm always a passenger, and um, hopefully the bus system is good, uh, where I can be able to uh, catch buses out there, and um, my, my nephew's out there too, and uh, he might be moving in with us at some point, we don't know yet, but um, it's it's going to be an interesting journey, but again, I'm so, oh, God. yeah. My dad, lives, my dad lives downtown, and mm-hmm. takes the buses everywhere. Yeah, you got you got to do that. You got to uh, take advantage of public transportation because you know that's what they're there for. Yeah, I mean he likes it. He's like, oh no, it's so easy. I don't have to worry about other drivers. He gets wherever he needs to be. You know. Right. He totally takes advantage, and I'm so glad at 76 years old I don't have to have the fight with him that a lot of people have with their elder parents, mm-hmm. their older parents, with like the keys. Uh, my, my mom is 69, and I'm starting to have that fight with her, sadly. Oh, good Lord. It's, I remember my, my grandfather uh, just refused. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, that's their independence, too. When you drive, that's like your way of, you know, making your... It's a, it's a symbol of independence. And when that's taken away, it's a fight. Yeah. So I'm really lucky I, don't ha- I didn't have to do that with with my dad not that he he, he, can, he can see fine everything's fine he has all his faculties he, he's a vegan mm-hmm. so <laughs> he he's not even on any medication whatsoever like doesn't take wow that has no ailments so um you know he really uh takes care of himself so he walks two miles a day and then takes the bus you know so he, he could still drive if he wanted to he was just like you know what I'm good. So, you know, I'm lucky in that in that regard. You are very blessed, Allison. You yeah. You have yourself a great day. Be safe out there, and th- thank you so much for for contacting me because it, it rarely ever happens. I'm, I'm sad to say. I always have to be the one to contact first. But thank you so much. Oh no, I love you, Tommy, and thanks for having me. And um, I sent you a link to the book. So I just got it. <laughs> Do you like the cover? I love it. Oh, my God. That is really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's like a cool actor book. Most actor books are, like, very dramatic in terms of, like, you're going to sit down and have a very intense read. And this one's like, this you'll use. This is practical. So it's good information and a fun cover. So Anyway, thank you, Tommy. My pleasure. Love you. Bye-bye. And tell your mom happy Mother's Day. I will. Oh, by the way, I gave her I, I gave her her card on Monday because I thought that was uh, Mother's Day. It's usually on May eighth. <laughs> uh, you just be like, yeah, no, I've been thinking about it. I just wanted to get it to you early. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. All right. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Well, there you have it, Allison Croft. Oh, I just love her and adore her. And she is just the real deal. And she's helping young actors out there in the the right way, in the moral way. You gotta love her. So go uh, check out uh, Speaking Actor. It's available on Amazon. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes!